If you want to know what it's like working at IT Help Desk, stay tuned. Welcome back, Chatter Crew. It's your boy HD. Hey, man, appreciate you for tuning in to episode three. I almost messed that up. <laughs> uh, Techno Chatter, man. Hey, it's the first time on the channel and you're interested in IT or cybersecurity, make sure you hit that subscribe button because this is the channel for you. Now, as you guys know, in my first video, I told you guys how I got my start in my career by having a help desk experience for my foundation for everything. Um, if you haven't seen that video, guys, I want you to go right up here and click on it right there. You can see my first video on how I got my start in cybersecurity. Now, moving along so we can talk about what this video is really about. Uh, May 2014 is basically when I got my career start. First real paying job doing IT. Um, I was a government contractor on the TSA contract and I want to say a very interesting experience, man. I mean, I got um, a security clearance from this and as you guys know, if you have a security clearance, you can be way more attractive to different jobs that you're trying to get, especially if you're trying to get in the government sector. So that was pretty much good for that. Um, I put it like this, man. Uh, when it came to IT, the help desk gave me my foundation of like everything. Like, yes, I had a student job in school that was very good, but it was nothing like having actual paid real paid experience uh, it showed me a lot of things man and honestly the funny thing is about this whole job is when i got approached with a job from a recruiter i didn't even know it was help desk it was a i think it's like a training class of seven or eight of us we didn't know it was help desk until the first day we got there and they said yeah you're gonna be talking on the phone and we like talking on the phone i'm not a call center guy i don't i don't know how to do that i don't know i don't like that i don't want to talk to people every day um, so that was like big. I was like, cause I was nervous. I was like, man. And for you guys that don't know, when you're not hired on permanent and you're a contractor, uh, it's a little different. Like the contractor telling me stuff like, hey, if they don't like you, then they can decide, you know, to they don't want you on the contract anymore and X, Y, Z. So that was like added pressure onto like some job. And when we first got there to the training, I'm talking about she's basically telling us uh, uh, my trainer a lot of information i'm talking about, i took notes of everything and i really was like man can i do this but uh we got through it we got to do training we got to do uh drive and simulate and that's one of the best things uh, that you can do for any job is actually try to get real experience doing what you'll be possibly doing day to day what we did at work uh pretty much as i was a level one agent services analyst whatever you want to slice and dice it same thing we work for TSA, we basically support all the TSA members. So that's what, 50, 60,000 people. Then after that, they added on like Federal Air Marshals. We all know that's short for, I mean, long for FAM. So those are those guys that are in the planes that you don't know they're in the plane. So their job is very, very important. Um, so we handled them. We didn't handle anything with money. Everything we handled was software related or maybe some minor hardware stuff. But granted, if we're over the phone, we can't do anything hardware related to these guys. We can try to walk them through it, see if they can fix it. If not, we can say, hey, contact your IT specialist. Um, yeah, man, this job was uh, pretty interesting uh, for the most part. I mean, I pretty much mastered most of everything in the first six months because uh very good training to start off on days and then i went to nights and it was pretty cool i mean starting off when we first started off uh, our contract was in the migration period so they had people that were technically still in dfw helping us and then everything migrated over to the vulture city location that's why i was working at vulture city and that's when our uptake and our call volume went up. And I mean, it's pretty interesting, man. You got calls about everything. The hardest thing about everything sometimes is the users because some people are very computer illiterate. They don't know anything. I'm talking about telling them some simple as like, hey, go to your internet browser. What's my internet browser? They don't even know that they technically been using the internet. Like, oh man. You just, you just name it, man. It was, uh, <laughs> sometimes it could be very trying, and then sometimes it's pretty fun. I mean, the help desk, uh, everything's pretty much a lot of scripted stuff uh, as far as what to do for this, this. You have templates just about for everything. The ticketing system we use was Remedy. 
which it was always messing up, but I like Remedy because I know it has a lot of potential if the maintenance is done right on the ticketing system. So I actually prefer to like use Remedy even when I left the help desk. Use Remedy of uh, software tools we use was uh, I learned how to use. Well, first we used uh, NetIQ, which was uh, another program that was connected to their Active Directory, which was super fast and quick. You can do a lot with it. But we lost that, and then I learned how to use Active Directory. And for you guys who know, Active Directory is where you can reset a user's password, map them a network drive, share a mailbox, permissions, you name it. You can pretty much do anything with Active Directory. Um, before we had Microsoft Teams, they had this thing called Office Communicator. We used that a lot to remote into people's machines to do um, non-admin level work. Uh, if we had to do admin level work, we would use uh, RDP and use our C accounts, which was our admin accounts for that uh, account. And we would perform anything that was um, needed for the client to be done or the customer, the end user, whatever you want to call it. Um, the good thing about that being a government entity is that everything was structured. They had pretty much a plan for how to do everything. So people couldn't just download anything from the browser. They had to contact us and say, hey, I want to download so-and-so. And we say, okay, hey, fill out the software request tool or go to the link and fill that out. Once it gets approved, you get the software installed for you. Um, that makes everything easy, especially from now, from a security standpoint, we see a ton of stuff that's not supposed to be downloaded. And if the company that you work for doesn't have, is really lax on that, you're gonna always run into security issues, but that's a security video, not an IT video. Uh, moving along. I wanna get into some of the, the pros and cons of IT for a second, um, IT help desk. The pros will be a very, flexible schedule you can pretty much most of the time most help desks are 24 by 7 so you can work any type of shift I mean I worked out of those two years I worked every type of shift I came in at like 5 in the morning I came in I came in at like 10 at night uh, you name it 8 to 5 9 to 6 11 to 10 you name it uh, so you had that much get A1 troubleshooting <laughs> you get A1 troubleshooting skills. And what I mean by that is this job isn't meant for everybody. Uh, a lot of times you gotta think on your toes, you might be hit with something you've never seen before. And you got an angry person on the other end that you have to get them quieted down and you gotta figure out a solution. This translates into every area of your life because now you're always thinking about, okay, hmm, what's the problem and how do I solve it? That mindset has helped me negate a lot of issues in my personal life, for the most part. Communication. Communication is a big one. With me, um, when it came to help desk, we had to rely on some of the other texts to get us the information when we didn't have access to everything. So we were talking to them every time, say, hey, I need a password reset for this, I need to do this, I need to do that. And they were doing it. So every job I've been to since then, I've been a big on a lot of communication. This, this, let me know that, that I can help you. I'm, I'm big on that, even when I do team assignments, because it makes everything easier. Communication is always one of the biggest things in any company. Literally, it's always one of the biggest things that you can run into. And that communication also uh, ties into like teamwork. You know, we do have our introverts and extroverts, some people that are meant to take, you know, orders and some people that may lead, but a lot of times it's gonna take a collaborative effort to solve the problem that you're working on. And coming from an environment like that, that helps out a lot. I mean, a lot of stuff you aren't gonna know. Like you have to lean on those, uh, technically they're tier two, we call them 1.5. You have to lean on the that 1.5 and say, hey, uh, I'm seeing this from this user machine I've never seen before. Do you know what this could possibly be? And you're working with them and that's how you figure out something. That's how you learn. So that was uh, one of the pros that I got from it. Now, if we really want to get to the cons, which can be for any job. Even though I bought a, a flexible schedule, 
also you can also have frequent schedule change if they're losing people or stuff like that and say oh, hey we need you to work this right here and most of the time you don't have you know enough you don't have enough leverage to say I don't want to do that sometimes you got to wait till you like two three years in to be able to pull something like that so most of the time you can't pull something like that off and tell them that um, low pay now let me put this in perspective when I was doing help desk, my pay was good for the area, but for the work that I did, it didn't add up. You ended up doing more work than what you would pay for. And in this particular instance, they would add on stuff to the contract, not consult us or give us more work, but not saying, hey, we're gonna give you guys like an extra dollar, $2 an hour because we just brought in 15,000 more clients and we know it's gonna up your workload, so here. so. That's one of the biggest things you see in help desk because they feel help desk people are expendable, which and they mostly some of them are, but sometimes they not. Sometimes you want to replace that good agent you had for like two years. It might take you a while, especially if that's they're not really dialed in. They're just there to collect the check. You can tell when people are doing that at work. High turnover is one of the biggest things in help desk because. Uh, help desk is one of those, I want to say feeder position or whatever you want to call it, but literally a lot of people are taking help desk just to get experience. A lot of people have no reasons or want to stay in help desk for their whole career. And a lot of managers know that, but they take them because, hey, we need these guys. We have, you know, however many calls a day or a week and we just need people. But they take them knowing that this guy is probably not going to, this woman or man is probably not going to be here in six months. So that's one of the big things because the high turnover means, hey, you can't take off or this or that because we don't have coverage. So you have stuff to work. So it all ties in together. And then one of the biggest uh, cons that I dealt with is trying to leave help this, uh, whether you're trying to leave internally and they keep you there or you're trying to go to different companies. Uh, you run into companies not wanting to let you do the job because technically all you have is help this experience and not the experience for whatever job you're trying to get. But at the same time, that experience will translate into anything because if anybody's work help us know you gotta learn a lot and you gotta do this and that and learn on the fly. So you pretty much can do any job. I tell people all the time, technical applications and skills and jargon, that can be taught. Wanting to know how to do it and being able to comprehend it is two different things. I run into that a lot. It's, it's some people that just aren't meant to do certain jobs and you see it. And you're asking yourself or you're asking your teammates, like, how did they get this job? Like, this, this ain't this hard. I, you, you, I literally know sometimes I'm like, man, I can hire some people that can do, I can train them with no experience and they be willing to do a good job. And sometimes it's just not for them. All in all though, man, uh, I normally would suggest help desk for anybody who doesn't have any IT experience. It's gonna give you the best of the best. Now, I'm not saying you gotta stay there forever because the high, help desk is a good thing. Like for example, you do help desk, then you get to do nights. If you're in school or you're trying to study for certs or you got another job or this or that, that's the kind of stuff you can do with help desk where you can be very flexible and work on your plan on what you want to do in the future and it can help you out. Now the thing with help is, is take everything you learned there and translate it into your next job, a real job, and you should be fine. Um, normally, I can tell people who have maybe some either other IT experience or help desk because they're different, they're good at communication, documentation, um, putting together uh, playbooks, templates, you name it, those people right there, they are very great at that, they excel at that. And most of the time, those people go on to be leaders or tier three or stuff like that. They're going to be different things in their new environments. Like me right now, I'm tier two. Uh, just think about that, guys. Like I went from level one help desk in 2014 to now 2020, or well, late 2019, 2020, tier two. It's possible, guys. It's very possible to do whatever you want to do. All in all though, if I was really to rate my help desk experience, guys, I'd say I'd give it a eight out of 10 because the benefit of what it gave me leaving 
has helped me tremendously in my career, and I'm forever grateful for that, for that experience. No, it didn't always go the way I wanted to. I still gotta tell you guys about some of the stuff I went through with help desk that didn't have to do with the job, more so the company and the environment. And that's gonna be a doozy. That might be a, uh, a hour video. Just kidding, I'm not gonna do that to you guys. Hey, but uh, appreciate it. I'm glad if you made it this far in the video, make sure you check out the playlist. Make sure don't forget to subscribe to the channel. Share this to your social media. Comment, like, thumbs down. You know me. It's your boy HD, I'm out.